Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. You know, the story of Abraham and Isaac is recorded in Genesis 22. Is one of those accounts from the Old Testament that I think is pretty familiar with most people. I mean, we know the details. It's the excruciating and painful story of the consideration that a father has to make, a father who's been asked by God, asked to sacrifice his son, his beloved son. And you know, honestly, I can't imagine a single reader in the last several thousand years who's read this text and hasn't found themselves in some ways appalled. Appalled that God would, would ever ask such a thing of any father. Or appalled even that Abraham so easily, so quickly obliges and obeys. I mean, after all, where's the Abraham who, who a few chapters before this had stood before God and haggled over the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? Challenging God and saying, surely you would not sweep away all that city for the sake of ten righteous people living there. We may wonder, will God ever test us the same way? Or what will we do when tested? Now, of course, certainly we know that our own Lord Jesus Christ himself teaches us these words in the Lord's Prayer. That when we pray to our Heavenly Father, we should most definitely pray, lead us, lead us not into temptation. We know that scripture and our catechism teaches that God tempts no one. But in Genesis 22, God, at the very least, tests Abraham. And honestly, I can't really see much difference between the two here, testing and tempting. At the end of the day, at the end of it all, Abraham is simply forced to walk by faith. Abraham is forced to trust that God must see the bigger picture, must be able to see farther than Abraham can, because Abraham can't possibly see how there can be any good outcome from all of this. He trusts that God must see the outcome, and that God will then provide in God's way and in God's time, and so Abraham follows in faith. I mean, what else could he do in a time of testing? I mean, is he going to give up on God? Is he going to walk away and think that he knows better than God? Would you and I do that in a time of testing? Are we really going to give up on God just because we're brought to our limit? Are we going to think that we know better than God? Well, that's what testing is for. It's for the purpose of bringing us to the end of our limits, to, to bring us to faith. Abraham obeys God because he knows that God is good and that God can see farther than he can see. And so Abraham obeys even when every fatherly instinct tells him otherwise. And so after three days, we're told they arrive at the mountain, Mount Moriah. And isn't it interesting how so many significant salvation moments occur on mountains in the Bible? But you know, in my opinion, the ultimate moment of truth, the ultimate moment of of testing the ultimate moment of faith comes as these two are walking up the mountain. Abraham and Isaac, everything slows down. And, and all this time we've been wondering, what is it that God sees, right? Abraham's wondering what God sees, but in this moment, it's what Isaac does not see that disturbs him. And Isaac asks his father, he says, Father, behold, I see, I see the wood. <laughs> And I see the fire, but Father, I do not see the sacrifice. I do not see the lamb. And what makes it all the more poignant is the fact that this is the only recorded conversation we have in all the Bible between these two people, between this father and son, Abraham and Isaac, as important as they are. Abraham speaking to Isaac, his beloved son, the one he had waited for, the son of purpose, the only words we have recorded that he speaks to Isaac is an answer to that question, and all he can say is, Isaac, you may not be able to see, but God sees. God will provide. Now, granted, there's a whole lot of other details that I'm sure we would love to be able to see in this account. I'm sure we'd love, wouldn't it be interesting to see into Abraham's mind, the internal struggle, the questions he was wrestling with, the doubts, or to be able to see into Isaac's mind, right? Or to see Isaac's face, that moment that Abraham takes out the rope and begins to bind him up. But the text, it zooms right past such details, doesn't it? 
And instead, it takes us in vivid color and in excruciating slowness and profound clarity, and it shows us instead the act of Abraham building the altar, arranging the wood just so, binding his son, placing Isaac on the wood, taking out his knife, stretching out his hand, and about to plunge that knife into his beloved son's heart. Those are the details we see. And, you know, they say the devil's in the details, and no doubt the devil is no doubt there tempting Abraham all the way, but, but God is most definitely in these details too. We discover, as Abraham discovers, in fact, that God is very, very present. And that God is indeed able to see what all along Abraham has not seen and what we ourselves too often do not see, the real meaning of this text, which, by the way, is not so much about Abraham, not so much about his life, not so much about his obedience or the fact that he passes this test, his faith and his faithfulness, no. No, nor is this text even about the immediate provision that's provided. I mean, yeah, there's a ram, right? Remember? A ram caught in the thickets by its horns. But, but, but think about it. This ram, it's, it's not quite the lamb, is it? It's just a ram. It's not the lamb that Isaac asked for when he said, Father, I do not see the lamb. And even Isaac. Isaac's the son in this text who's almost sacrificed, but he's not really the son, is he? The sacrificial son. And Mount Moriah, well, even it begins to fade into the background as we see this same mountain in the distant future. You see, what a lot of people don't realize is that this Mount Moriah is the very same Mount Moriah that a thousand years later, King Solomon would build the very temple of God upon, the very place where God's presence would, be, would dwell, would be the very place where he had asked Abraham once to sacrifice his own son. And as you and I know, that it's not far from that temple mount that there would be a little rise where the Romans crucified their criminals, a little rise called Calvary, a little knoll called Golgotha, the place of the cross. You see, it's here in this text that we see what God sees. The beginning, the middle, and the end is all in sight, God's sight. We see the Lamb who will be slain. Not to test Abraham's faith, but rather to save humanity. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And Abraham will call this place Yahweh Yira, or as we've maybe heard it, Jehovah Jira, which means God sees. Now I know, that's not how we learned it, right? Jehovah Jira means God will provide, right? That's how almost every English translation puts it. But that's strange because the Hebrew word ra'ah, literally and simply means to see. And not even just to see to it. Maybe that's where the English translations get to the word provide, that God will see to it. And in a sense, I guess that works, but, but at its most basic, it simply is saying God will see. God sees. And so it is that Abraham calls the place God sees. God saw what Abraham never saw and what you and I so seldom are able to see, the Lamb of God in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our testing I mean, think about it, this narrative, <laughs> the whole point of this narrative, some 2,000 years after Abraham was born would be fulfilled. Some 4,000 years later, <laughs> you and I are born, and yet through it all, God sees. For God, the end has always been in sight. And on that day that Abraham and Isaac climbed Mount Moriah, the promise that God had given, starting with Adam and Eve, and to Abraham was no longer just words anymore, but now had been acted out, prophesied, foreshadowed, a literally living picture of God and how much he loves the world, that he would give his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. You see, in a lot of ways, that's what Lent really is all about. It's a time when we slow down, just like this text slows down and shows us some of the excruciating details of Abraham struggling and Isaac struggling, but God always seeing and God always providing. Lent is a time for us to slow down and examine. Examine again the passion accounts of our Lord. Examine again texts such as this to examine every corner of our own lives too, slowly, carefully, painfully, poignantly, 
to see where sin is, but also to see the big picture, too, to see the passion of our Lord, the one who was stricken and smitten, beaten and abused, to see the truth, to see that we need a Savior, and to see just how much God has done for us and how much God will yet do. So it's for that reason that Lent's called a journey. We journey through scriptures, journey through the passion. This year we call it the return from exile. On Ash Wednesday we got to see just how it is our Lord takes us from the dust and ashes of our existence and clothes us with robes of Christ's own righteousness. Last week we traveled from garden to garden to garden, the garden of Eden to the garden of Gethsemane to the very garden gates of heaven itself. And today's theme is the tale of two mountains, Calvary and Moriah. Two mountains, maybe in our eyes, but in God's eyes, they've always been one. And there on that mountain, there's always been one son, one savior, one lamb. There on that mountain, that by which God tested Abraham, God would actually do himself. That God so loves the world that he would give his son. And maybe today we walk away with a little lesson about faith. That indeed, faith is trusting God even when we can't always see how things will work out for good. Like Isaac, how often do we ask in the midst of our trouble and our fear and our worry and our problems in life, in the moments when we feel the weight of our sin and the condemnation and the guilt, and we wonder, Father, I see I see the wood and I see the fire, but Father, I can't see the lamb. I can't see the gospel. But may we always answer our own questions with the answer that Abraham gave Isaac. God sees the lamb. God sees the lamb whose blood was slain, was shed to cover over your sin, to cover over all that separates you from God. God sees your Savior. And brothers and sisters in Christ, that's what matters most. In Jesus' name, amen.